Hello there, and in this video we're going to talk about primorials, uh, what they are and how to calculate them. So you've probably not heard of primorials or encountered them in your everyday mathematical studies, um, but in this video we're going to pretty much lay the foundations of what they are and how to deal with them. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to you know briefly review something that you may have already heard of, and that is what we call a factorial. So recall what a factorial is, is, is the product of natural numbers or factors less than or equal to a given number. And we're going to call that number n. And usually we represent a factorial via n with an exclamation mark. So what is a factorial and how to calculate it? Well, it's the product of factorials less than or equal to n. Uh, so let's do a couple examples here. So what would 4 factorial be? So 4 factorial is going to be equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 by definition. Uh, so 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24 times 1 is going to be 24. Uh, so we get that 4 factorial is equal to 24. Another example, so what would 5 factorial be? So by definition, this is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, and we can do that math out, or we can observe that this term right here, 4 times 3 times 2 is 1, is the same as 4 factorial. So we can represent this as 5 times 4 factorial. So we can rewrite this as 5 times 24, which we know to be equal to 120. Uh, so that means 5 factorial is going to be 120. So as n gets big uh, for these numbers, the factorial of that number uh, gets really big really quickly. Uh, some basic uh, ones, of course. Uh, for example, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. And 1 factorial is going to be equal to 1, since that's the least natural number in existence. Uh, but there is one special number, and that's going to be 0 factorial, and that's going to be equal to 1. And most people take this by definition only. So nothing to question here. Let's just assume 0 factorial is equal to 1. And there's many uh, reasons why this convention is usually taken to be equal to 1, uh, to make a lot of formulas uh, nice for probability, statistics, and combinatorics problems. Um, but we're not going to discuss them here. So we'll just take you know, 0 factorial to be equal to 1. So that pretty much brings us to the point of this video, and that is what is a primorial. So a primorial has a very similar definition to this. So this is the product of prime numbers less than or equal to a number. And let's call that number n. So this is going to be denoted via n with a pound sign next to it. So this is going to be n primorial. So what is this? Uh, but before we can you know, discuss you know, the primorial, one needs to know what a prime number is. So remember what a prime number is. It is a natural number that has exactly two distinct factors, one and itself. So what are some of the prime numbers? So two is going to be a prime number, so that's going to be one and two. Uh, three is going to be a prime number because only numbers that divide into three are one and three. Uh, four has factors one, two, and four. Uh, so that means 4 is not a prime number. Uh, and 5 has numbers 1 and 5, so that means 5 is a prime number as well. So 2, 3, 5 is a prime number. Uh, but what about 1? Well, 1 only has 1 only, and the definition says it has to have exactly two distinct factors. So that means 1, by this definition, also is not a prime number as well. So we have some key properties for prime numbers if you're not already aware. Uh, the first one is one is not a prime number. Uh, the second property is two is the least 
prime number. And another property is that two is the only even prime number. And I can leave this as an exercise to those who uh, want to sort of prove uh, the statement that two is the only even prime number. A uh, very easy thing to uh, justify. All right, so let's get back to the question. What is the primorial and primorial equal to? All right, so let's take a couple examples here. So the first example, let us assume we want to find what five primorial is equal to. So we know uh, all the numbers less than five are gonna be five, four, three, two, and one. So we're gonna multiply together all the numbers less than or equal to five that are prime in this case. So in this case, five is prime, well four is not prime, three is prime, and two is prime, and one is not prime. So that means five primorial is gonna be equal to five times three times two. So that's gonna be five times three is gonna be 15 times two is going to be 30. So that means five primorial is equal to 30. Okay, um, let's do a, another example. Uh, what about six primorial? So all the numbers less than, less than or equal to six are gonna be six, five, four, three, two, and one. And we're just gonna march through these numbers. So six is in prime, four is in prime, two is in prime, and well, two is prime. I don't know why I just scratched that out. Uh, so five, three, and two are these values that are prime that are less than or equal to six. So it's gonna be five times three times two. So again, that's gonna be 30. Okay, well, that's an interesting observation, right? So five primorial and six primorial are the same exact answers. Uh, and there's a very important property that's associated with primorials, uh, namely n primorial is equal to n minus one primorial if n is composite. And remember what composite means, composite means not prime. So six factorial, I mean six is a composite number, so six primorial must be equal to six minus one primorial. Uh, but this is a recursive definition, right? Because let us assume we take, say, uh, 10 primorial. So we know 10 is a composite number because 10 has factors one, two, five, and 10. So that means that's gonna be equal to nine primorial. But nine is also a composite number as well. So nine primorial is going to be equal to eight primorial. But eight is also a composite number because it has factors one, two, four, and eight. So that's gonna be equal to seven primorial, right? And what is going, and what is going, the, what is seven primorial going to be equal to? So seven primorial is gonna be equal to the product of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all the prime numbers that are in this set. So six is not prime, four is not prime, and one is not prime. So this is gonna be equal to seven times five times three times two. And we already know that five times three times two is gonna be five primorial, which we already found to be equal to 30. So this is gonna be seven times 30, which is gonna be 210. That means seven primorial is going to be equal to 210. And by the preceding logic, that also means that 10 primorial, nine primorial, eight primorial, and seven primorial, all these are equal to 210. But if we go up one more, for example, 11, 11 primorial is going to be equal to 11, because 11 is prime, times the next prime down, which is going to be seven primorial. And that's gonna be equal to something, right? So these are some you know, basic uh, primorial calculations. Uh, so if we go in one of the extremes, for example, two primorial, well, the only num natural numbers less than or equal to two are gonna be two and one, uh, but one is not gonna be equal to a prime number, so two primorial is gonna be equal to two. And of course, there's no numbers less than or equal to two, so sometimes it's not uh, useful or in trivial to go less than two, uh, but there are a couple definitions uh, that we usually assume. We usually assume that one primorial and zero primorial, both of these are equal to one. And usually we take these by convention only.
Um, because, you know, just like factorials, like zero factorial is equal to one, uh, defining these two allow for simple properties to be implemented. So that's pretty much what a primorial is. It's just the product of uh, prime numbers less than or equal to whatever number is specified, uh, which is related to the factorial, of course. Now, in terms of applications, primorial uh, is directly, you know, connected to the set of prime numbers, and, pri and prime numbers have uh, several different applications. Um, so definitely the primorial has applications related to whatever applications the prime numbers have, um, but they're not as, you know, well known or investigated as, say, factorial is, uh, hence probably why it isn't as famous yet uh, as the factorial function.